I'm Scott L. Miller. This is my vlog of everyday life living in Latin America. I have been an expat for 10 years. I've been planning on being an expat and put in a lot of effort, making sure that the process was smooth and easy for me for about 15. My family has always wanted to travel and live around the world together, and it's something that we made happen and has been one of the most amazing experiences for us, and been, it's been fun, interesting, educational, and a great family-building experience. I am so thrilled with how that worked out for my family that I spend a lot of time sharing that experience and helping other people become expats as well. In this process, so many people, for obvious reasons, are nervous about the either the effort that it's going to take to become an expat or have fears about becoming an expat. And we've talked about some of that. Lots of videos cover that. Today, I want to talk about the path of least resistance. What is the easiest thing to do with your life? And I think for many people, this is going to come as one enormous surprise. So we're going to talk about that right after the book. As with any discussion like this, it's important to understand that everybody's unique and everybody's experience is different. Everyone has different challenges, whether it's you have lots of pets or you have uh, kids or you uh, have uh, very, very tight income or no ability to work online. Everyone has a unique situation, so we don't want to you know, inappropriately lump everyone together. But one of the things that we have found, having lived abroad for so long, having moved to many different countries, I've lived in eight countries with some of them being more than once. And I've put in a lot of time visiting countries and a ton of time doing research. So this is something that we're very passionate about and have a lot of experience in having done multiple times. And so my family is American. That's where we come from. I grew up in New York. I lived in Texas for a very long time. I've lived all over the US. I've worked all over the US and in Canada and the UK and other place, Spain, and uh, putting all this together, one of the most surprising things um, for me is discovering, and, and this took some time to really understand that it wasn't a fluke, that this really was how it was, and, and realizing that the only thing uh, that was making it feel untrue was a mental barrier. And that mental barrier is the fear of the unknown, the fear of doing something new, the fear of, of change. And I've talked about the mental barrier of travel that, uh, you know, the first, having been to Europe and Africa, all over North America, uh, like I've really traveled. And yet I hadn't been to South America at one point. And I knew, and I, I actually had a show where I said, you know, I know that I have a mental barrier in South America feels far away. It feels like a new place. It feels difficult but I know it's not. I know it's gonna be no different than going to Europe, no different than going to Mexico, right? If I go to Argentina or Colombia, Peru, they're gonna feel just like going to Mexico, Guatemala, Panama, right? They're not some big, difficult thing. They're not more difficult than those other places. And all those other places are really, really easy. Well, they're going to be easy too, but I have this mental barrier and nearly everyone has this mental barrier that there's something new, in this case, relocation, moving to a new country for the first time, that seems really scary. And again, I understand if you have pets that you have to move, it can be more scary. If you have little kids, it's going to be somewhat more scary. There's things that can make it more scary. Obviously, if you are single and have no kids and, and no pets and, and tons of money, well, nothing's scary in that case. But for the average person, there's going to be some amount of things that make it a little bit more difficult. But almost always, those things are not really difficult. But the thing that I want to talk about is the path of least resistance. And so having lived in the United States, and I lived when the United States was much easier, right? Since then, the United States has more regulation, it has more fear, it has more crime, more danger. In some ways, some things have actually gotten better. So let's not belittle that. Uh, the, um, the, 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 the nature of moving abroad, the reasons that people wanted to move abroad were much more minor. In that time, living in the United States has gotten harder. Every time we go back to visit, we enjoy being there less. We fear or feel fear more, whether it's real or not, being back more and more. And the people we interact with are clearly less happy and more struggling every day. But the most important factor that has really changed that really represents a challenge is the cost of living. When we left the United States, which uh, we basically left in 2014, we didn't really establish ourselves somewhere, somewhere until 2015, but we were in motion uh, basically since 2011 and physically since 2013 and actually got to Europe in 2015. I know, long story. I've, I've told the story before. We can go back and watch other episodes to really dig into our, our family's process. But 
in doing this, even back then when the cost of living in the United States was much lower, one of the things we quickly, quickly realized was it was easier for us to take the family and move to a new country than it was to remain where we were. Now, of course, in a minute to minute perspective, yes, it's true that if I at 4.30 in the afternoon, I'm in my house in Carrollton, Texas, by, if I want to do something by five o'clock, the easiest thing to do is just stay in my house obviously. But when we took any real amount of time, if we said, okay, over the next month, how much effort is it going to take to live in Texas? Well, I've got to run to the bank and deal with stuff. I have to figure out going grocery shopping. I have to pay the rent. That was the biggest thing. I have to pay for the food that we're going to eat. Once you took a month or maybe two months worth of effort of being in the United States and said, okay, now if we took the same two months and said, what if we moved to Spain, in the case of our first move, which activity is easier, living two months in Texas where we already are, or taking the time to pack up? We went down to 11 suitcases, got our kids. We had two kids at the time. I'm my youngest being, um, I believe she was three. She may have been two, just about to turn three. Uh, but that, yes, that seems right. I think she was three. And, um, and, and pack all of them up, load them into a flight, and go to Spain, at the end of the two months, where would we have put in more effort? And the reality was, is that Spain was the easier. Now, over just a course of two months, it's very close. But once you start looking at it over the long haul, well, what about after a year? What about after three years? Well, living outside the United States was so much easier every day was so much easier, especially because the cost of living is so much less. That is a unbelievably large factor. But when you think about you're in the United States and you have to pay rent, and that rent may be $1,500 a month. And you're like, okay, $1,500 a month, that represents this much effort. And then you look at some place like here in Nicaragua and say, okay, what would, what would a similar apartment or a similar house that $1,500 get me? And you say, okay, now I, I only have to pay $300 or $400 a month. And you're like, wow. Now, yes, maybe coming up with that money is a little bit harder, but it's so much less money. It, it generally represents a lot less effort. Okay, well, what about going to the grocery store? Well, in the United States, that represents this much cost and, and effort. And, and here, our example in, is Nicaragua now. Well, maybe it's this much cost and effort. It's not a ton less. It's not completely game-changing, but we save money every time we eat and it's a little bit easier. Driving to the grocery store here is a little bit easier for us, at least, than driving to the grocery store in Texas. Both are pretty easy, but which one is easier? Where is it easier to shop? Where is it easy to, easier to check out, easier to drive around? And very importantly, when we lived in Texas, we didn't have options like having a live-in cook and cleaner who takes care of the house for us and watches over the house and gives us an extra you know, adult watching over the kids and make sure that the dogs stay fed. When we lived in Texas, we couldn't afford to hire a person or persons to do something like that. We had to cook for ourselves. Well, that took a lot of effort and we had to go shopping for ourselves. And that took a little bit of effort and, you know, making sure that the dogs always have fresh water and always have food throughout the day. Okay. It's very minimal, but I work. And those are things that take effort. And when we moved here after a little while, we have someone who does those things. That's a huge leap forward in making our lives easier that we couldn't do in Texas. We couldn't. Some people have the funds to do that, but not normal people. But these things add up to, and I, I realize that we're, this seems like it's all financially based, and certainly to some degree it is, but also every moment of life, everything that we want to do, we have so much more freedom and flexibility and comfort and there's so many things that Americans have to worry about, Canadians have to worry about day to day, but we just don't have to worry about here. And sometimes those things are caused by financial differences. Oh, I need to run out and do errands. Well, in the United States, I have to do them, but here I can send someone to do them. Those things are significant and they add up. When it, Now, I work at home, so I have one perspective. If you're retired, you'll have a different perspective, right? You have a lot of free time, generally to do those things. Uh, and so for someone who's retired, the overall financial picture, more significant. The uh, For someone who's working, especially working a lot, and I'm a businessman, so if I have free time, I can use that in another business or in my vlog, uh, then, then having someone that takes that time off of me, that, that uh, lowers the number of interruptions I get during the day, those things matter a lot. And so those are ways that my life is improved very much by doing this. But uh, so we first moved to Spain and these things were true in Spain. They were true in Romania. They may not have been true in our living situation in Italy. We found that we lived in Noto, Sicily. That we found a little bit more expensive and definitely a lot more day-to-day -day work. Just the effort of being in Italy was a little bit harder than Spain or Romania. Uh, and so, yeah, maybe that one didn't always uh, make the, the situation come true. But 
for the most part, uh, mo I would say at least half of the places that we've lived, probably just over half, uh, are so much both financially easier and just the effort of life easier than being in the United States, that the path of least resistance, if we were to simply say, I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to do whatever takes the least effort from me, yes, if I'm only looking over the next 30 minutes or the next 24 hours, that's one thing. But once I apply that mental picture to a few months at a time, then leaving, actually becoming an expat, going out from my home country, actually lowers the amount of work I have to do. So when looking at it over that big scale, the path of least resistance is to actually become an expat and get out. Now, of course, part of the, a big piece of that depends on what countries you want to pick. Every time I have someone argue that it's costly to be an expat, every time someone argues that it's hard to be an expat, well, they're almost universally talking about European countries. And while Europe has a lot of really cool countries, and I use some of them in my examples, Europe is continuously becoming more expensive and more difficult and is less and less attractive as an expat location over time. It is already dramatic less attractive today than it was when I went to Spain in 2015. Uh, so the, the, the picture of being an expat is very different today than it was not that long ago. But it is very important to understand that there are many places, not just one. I, I'm in Nicaragua now. Yes, that's an example. Romania remains an example. Moldova is an example. Albania is an example. In Europe, we can come up with lots of European examples that where this remains true, just not as many, maybe not Spain, I'm sure not Italy, probably not France today, but a lot of the Eastern European countries are still within this category. Loads of Southeastern Asia, well within this category. The majority of Latin America falls into this category and potentially a bit of Africa falls into this category. Africa uh, is a little bit more challenging because of, of distance, because assuming you're coming from North America, because of language, because of lack of, of infrastructure. There are it's much harder for Africa to quickly fall into a, its easier overall picture compared to Southeast Asia or Latin America or Eastern Europe, where there's a ton of infrastructure and a ton of people doing these things. And it's a well-known, well-trodden path that you can get lots of resources on. That doesn't mean that Africa can't be a great option for you. And in our 10 countries to consider uh, around the world, we had a couple in Africa, Tanzania and Ghana specifically, uh, where I think there are, there are great options that are well worth investigating for someone who has that interest and in where in the world might I want to become an expat. I think that those, there, there's lots of great op options in Africa, but it's important to understand that they, they don't have the tourist infrastructure that many of the other places. They don't have that expatting infrastructure. They're just not expecting North American expats in any number. And that doesn't mean you're not welcome. It doesn't mean that they don't want you. It doesn't mean you wouldn't be, you know, a, a great benefit to the country there as well as somewhere else. But it's going to be a little bit more challenging for you. Over time, I think a lot of those countries, because you would get used to the the quirks, you would get used to what is exotic to you now. Um, and once you know how to shop and, and know where you want to be and, and figure out the language barriers and those things, I think so many African countries have lots and lots to offer to potential expats but you're not going to get your return on investment if that's, you know, your return on your effort investment, because that's what we're really talking about. This is not just finance. We're talking about your least resistance, this bigger picture of, of the effort of life, which includes coming up with money and paying bills as part of it. I think you'll find that uh, Latin America and Southeast Asia specifically will have returns very quickly. Latin America, probably the fastest. Nicaragua is one of the best because of the cheap flights to get here. You don't have a flight to overcome in your overall effort. Just, oh, it's a, you can come down for 150 bucks. Great. It's so easy to absorb that into, and life is so easy so quickly here. So here, like Spain for me in 2015, you're likely in two or three months to discover that in that period, you've made your life easier. If you're going to Southeast Asia, while overall life might, might be very easy, the flight to get there is expensive normally and will make it take a little bit longer to get that return on your effort investment. So we've come up with a new metric there to measure against. When going to Africa, you have expensive flights, again, if coming from North America, like you would going to Southeast Asia, but you also have just more complications on the ground in most cases that will make it take a little bit longer for you to make it the easier path. And again, for some people, the overall path of becoming an expat isn't going to be easier, but it's 
true, I think, for a surprising number of people. It doesn't feel like it'll be true for you. And it didn't feel like it would be true for us. But once we did it, and now we know we can do it repeatedly over and over again, it's very predictable. Places that are going to be low effort, low cost, and, and end up being easier for us than staying put in the place that we came from. Now, coming from Nicaragua, we never really find any place easier than just, than just staying here. We're among the cheapest and among the easiest of places to live. So this is a great example to compare against. It doesn't mean that just becoming an expat guarantees that your life will become easier. But there is a guarantee that the being an expat can make your life if you choose the, the things that um, make that possible. If that's a thing that is important to you, that if you feel that you can't become an expat because it's too hard, that I believe is simply untrue. You, if that was the metric you're using, I want to do the easiest thing, or um, this is a bar that I'm not able to handle, well, the path of becoming an expat for most people is lower than not becoming an expat. So if you're making the argument that the concept of expatting is too hard, it tells you that you are saying that living where you are is harder and you can't do it. So just like when people ask me, can I afford to live in Nicaragua? Well, I don't know what you can afford, but what I can tell you is that if you can afford to live anywhere, you can afford to live in Nicaragua because nowhere is it more affordable for the average person coming from North America. It is certainly cheaper than living back in North America. Now, again, if you're paid, you live, you know, you're, you live with your parents and they pay for everything as long as you live with them. But if you move away, they won't pay for you anymore. Well, obviously that's a different thing. But if you're looking at how much it costs to live anywhere, even Guatemala, even Mexico, even Panama, Costa Rica, US, Canada, all of them, apples to apples, cost more, some a little bit more, some tons more than Nicaragua. So if you can afford to live in any of those, you can live in Nicaragua. If you can afford X level of life in those places, you can afford more than X here in Nicaragua. Whatever you're able to do somewhere else, you can do more of here. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a lot more, but this is where you can financially get your greatest benefit as a North American and really close to it for European. Yes, Europeans have access to a lot of Africa pretty easily, and sometimes that will, because of its proximity, go farther. And there are some places in Africa that are cheaper than Nicaragua. So there is some possibility for Europeans to find something a little bit better, but only a little bit better. It's still, Nicaragua is really good. In the same vein, if you're looking for, I can't afford to live, where can I live the best? It's still going to be as an expat, not staying behind in North America. It's just so expensive, so hard, so much effort, so much mental overhead for normal people. Again, everyone, there's a possibility of being an exception. There are people for whom staying put or going to other locations uh, is going to be the easiest thing. But for normal people, for the majority of people, I truly believe that the easiest thing you can do with your life is become an expat. Maybe there's some planning you have to do. Maybe you have to do some research. Maybe it's not a thing you can do this afternoon. But the sooner you become an expat, the sooner your life becomes easier. You are, in many cases, literally spending more effort fighting being an expat than just making the call and moving into it. And that throws people off so much to the point where people will argue, I guarantee that there's going to be comments and I want comments, get that questions and comments, absolutely get down there. I love all the discussion, but I guarantee we're going to get people who give me completely non-logical responses because they don't understand what I'm saying. They can't grasp that being an expat could actually be easier because it feels like it takes more effort, but you've got to pack up. You've got to go somewhere. You've got to choose a place. You've got to do something. All that's true. But once you do that, things can be so much easier, mostly because they're cheaper, but for other reasons too, that over a bit of time, your overall effort is lower than if you hadn't become an expat. If you're going to argue with this point, that's what you have to argue against and say, well, I don't believe that's true and here's why. And that's fine. And for you, maybe that's true, that it won't count, right? But don't throw in a, but if I went to France, okay, but no one said go to France. You still have to make good decisions, right? The best things you can do will always be undermined if you ruin them, right? Is it better not to jump off a bridge into certain death? Ye no, no, I could shoot myself if I don't jump off the bridge and then I definitely die. Okay, but that's not the alternative, right? We're only comparing jumping versus not jumping, not jumping or doing something else even dumber, 
right? So if you, and I'm not saying going to France is dumb automatically, but if you're going to, if you have to use an example like people do and say, well, but if I went to this high cost European luxury destination that no one suggested, well, I could be double taxed and it's really hard to live there and blah, blah, blah. If you have to make that argument, you have accepted that my point is correct and you are desperately trying to undermine it by giving us a straw man. That is exactly what someone who is committed to the fact that the statement is true will make an argument to look like. So look for those because I get that a lot when people are uh, obviously convinced but don't like the answer. A lot of people don't like the answer. They want... They want to be told, you know, the thing that's easy for the next 30 minutes is also the thing that's good for the next 30 days or the next 24 months. But in most cases, it's not. Doing a little bit of effort up front, getting yourself to a place that's going to cost you less every day, make your life easier every day, is going to pay for itself in effort and probably in money relatively quickly. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller, or you can join our community. The join button is down below on your computer or phone. It's a $5 monthly membership, and it's not really getting you anything. It's a chance to join a, a community and, and make a small monthly financial commitment to help keeping this channel going. And, of course, we're going to be uh, releasing this on Thursday, mid-afternoon, Thursday evening. We do the live stream, so please uh, consider joining us for that. That's a lot of fun and a great place to ask questions in real time uh, about expatting Nicaragua, Latin America, moving abroad, uh, investing abroad, all those kinds of things. Come and talk to us in real time. Talk to other people in the community. Get to know each other. It is fun. We do that all evening. And I really appreciate everyone who comes and joins and everyone who supports the channel. And I will see all of you who I don't see in just a few hours on the live stream tomorrow.